Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sun Ying from Xiaomi. So today I am going to talk about from Mesos to Kubernetes. Actually, actually, the main content of my speech today. So maybe、uh, it's actually not like related to Mesos or Kubernetes because mo- most of my content will be more about. The container-based architect, and how shall we build our architect, and、uh, how shall we build the frameworks of our architect, and then the, also the compatibility of our architects. So our the Xiaomi pass is called Ocean. So actually, the it's more about the pass. So it's so it's not just a tool, but more like a compatible system. That can even kind of like go through these evolution from a EBC platform with some power to make some decisions. So it's more like a capable system. So this is the the architect of our system. So on the left side is the infrastructure that we rely on, and on the right hand side is the capabilities that we aim to achieve, and the, the green side,、uh, the. Part that we have done, and、uh, the orange part,、uh, the things that we are working on, and the grey parts are the things that we aim to achieve in the future. So all the infrastructure here, that the thing that we focus on is the SaaS and、uh, the value-added cap- capability that we have based on the past, and also the boundary scaling that we have during this process, and also in the master era, what did we do? So the container network. We know the container network is important in the past network, and also for the container network, that when we actually run it online, we have two actually two like two ways that we we run it is one is the metri line, and、uh, we when for each physical container we have a physical IP. And、uh, on these, we have the tag and、uh, root distribute and allocated, so we ha- to connect to the physical platforms. So when we applied these structure, it was at the end of 2015. We didn't have m- many good or mature solutions for container at that time. It was quite advanced and.、Uh, So it could help us to connect to all the physical networks, and、uh, it was quite stable in terms of the physical networks, and also for the, it was quite efficient at that time. But after some time of the, because we the the scale of our project. It went up, so we encountered two major problems. The fun is that it, the, the 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 configuration got more complicated. So it, when we have a new node, we need a new configuration, and、uh, because we scaled up, and then it got more complicated. And the second issue was that because these plan, actually, when we created the container, we need like real time. Allocation of the IP, so this brought an issue that if we rely on this、uh, DSP, the central, like the architecture, if it had any problem, then the whole container system would result in a, a, like a big problem. So in order to find a, like a more convenient and a more reliable container network, we actually. Like did a lot of investigations, and we had a lot of demo. And the, for instance, the CNA, CNA plugin, and or Calico, and also Nucleum、uh, based on VP, and all those projects. Actually, we we couldn't avoid one problem: is that we need real time allocation of IP when we run the container. So these will have rely on the central system. So if the central Like platform has a problem, then the whole system will get in trouble. So, we, at the in the at the end, we choose the Flano. So we use the Flano host gateway and、uh, these kind of VPC module. So actually, the theories behind those platforms、uh, were almost the same. So we. Like have this preset IP, and we can allocate the IP routes to a specific to the switch server, 
and then also to a VPC gateway. So through this way, we can actually get all the container networks connected. So the container network and the physical network can coexist on one platform, so it can be optimized. And also the storage architecture. So for the Docker, inside the, the Docker, so we have these storage. So we have several like basic requirements. So we found that inside the Docker, we need the read-write capacity. So can ha retrieve the I.O. capacity similar to the physical disk. And secondly, we want the disk space can be isolated. So, for instance, I, we allocate a um, 100 gigabit like disk space, then those can be isolated, and uh, the isolation can be used as a resource in the storage architecture that can be called when we need. Then also the third request that we had was actually because we have some debugging, lo uh, debug logging, and when we talk about the logging, we need some like um, transfer. Mechanism. So when the container like logged out, we we don't want it to just uh, to clean the storage that we used for the container. So we want the synchronous cleanup. So the plan that we had at the end, so we had divided into two spaces for the storage. So one is the, the Docker, and uh, at the back end, we have, so each time we created the container, we have this volume and have this LVM. So we use this LVM to actually expand this storage and also com in combination with the root storage and all those get together for a new storage architecture so this enabled us to have a better allocation for the storage and to better call the resources this also in helped us to ensure the io capacity of our disk and so this was about how to build the image so we know that when we write the doc file we know it was quite kind of like a pain in the ass, so like it took a lot of time and then a lot of resources. And if all the developers and architects need to write a, like the doc file, it it wouldn't be realistic. And then even to do a like to do a good job would be even more difficult. So. So maybe that we can have the stock file shutting, and uh, we will like some commonly used operating environment will be also right into the doc file sharding. It's kind of like a built-in competition. So when users want to use this, so you can just build image inside and then, then compile them together to like form this kind of operating environment he or she desires. And also we have this CMD be fixed to the Docker and then when we initiate the Docker, this can be used as the tool at the Docker int, uh, the Docker init. So actually, the Docker init is inside the Linux operating system. We have this OS, like Docker init processing, but inside the container, there isn't a Docker int. We need to write it ourselves. So uh, like at the beginning, we had this tool. So it would be responsible for the processing, initiation, and the managing inside the container, and we are also responsible for like connecting with a lot of systems. And uh, we were kind of hoping that these kind of like we can control some of the behaviors inside the container, and we have these a uh, switch system and can inject the things into the container. So a brief thing that kind of like like uh, so we have a debug mo like mode. So inside the the container, so this kind of like dynamic environment, when the user releases a task or a job, so because of like maybe like an environment like or other issues that those process couldn't be started, so those like debug will be quite difficult. So we had this debug mode. So it's quite simple, actually. So when we run the testing, so it's kind of like a con shell, and then it's kind of like an like a like empty shell that we 
to run the image and to put it in the cluster. But it's not the process that we need to have. But it's kind of like an empty shell. So this is the debug model that we designed. Also, the the for a pass platform, when we have to put it into practice, we need to think about the infrastructure to kind of like work together with the infrastructure. So to improve the capability of the pass. So the load balancing. Or the、e、ELB. So a lot of companies use ELFs and DBFs, so to do their own traffic net and also about the balancing. And for so at Xiaomi, we also have a problem that after we containerized, so the LG was also containerized, and we have a dynamic upgrade. So how can we like detect the LB? So we have these real server dynamic changes, and to to have this real time detection, so we have this service. It's called Mail Mail B. So for like a private cluster, so we have this control plane. So for a cloud provider, we have a ELB API. Actually, we did a lot of things. The firstly, that we have an we have automatic allocation for the MLB. These based on the operators, and、uh, we will have different domain name to actually decide the routes. And for instance, for the China mobile users, we were. Track the or we'll actually redirect the traffic to the China Mobile, and for the Unicom users, we will redirect the traffic to the the、uh, server. So the advantage is the that we can actually help the users to make their kind of like the have a more reasonable allocation to save the. Kind of like bandwidth, and we use Docenta and ELB services, the two services running together, to to do the LB real server automatic upgrade. So the the design purpose is that to guarantee the ELB service when we have like any problem, we will have something else to have the backup, so to make it more reliable. So for the cloud clusters, so cloud vendor clusters, so we, so for their network, it's quite restricted. So if we need LB services for a cloud vendor cluster, they can be connected to the network that I just mentioned. So we add one more layer, as a proxy. So it's kind of like a proxy for our traffic. So it's kind of like something that we need a lot of maintenance work to be done. So these like、uh, the layer added means that we have more chances for like encountering problems. So we need like a deeper connection with the cloud vendors and、uh, so like that the LB from the cloud vendors to actually connect to our router and also the log service. So here, actually, it's about debug log. So the debug log here will be used in a kind of like a ELK solution, which is common in our industry. And the log dash, it will be like lighter.、Uh, we have a few bit. In、uh, so we will run it on, on the container. So when the container exits or log out, we have this kind of like.、Uh, Delayed recovery, so enable the log to send it like completely, and then to recover the container afterwards. And also, we will define a log regulation for our or directory for our users specifications, and they can realize this self-discovery. So to 
like this automated process will enable them to find which like parts need to be reported, and uh, also we have different labels and uh, like drug, like the drug name and the, the also to classify it. And for different scenarios, these actually bring a lot of challenges. So when users look up the log, they use keywords. They type in keywords, and then when we report it to the ES and all the data, are uh, basically most like they they use different ways to do the searching. So it's kind of like a challenge in terms of the performance. So for the secure private login. So we have these password-free or secret or secrets-free private login. So we hope that we have these a system that is in line with the physical or the the physical system. So at Xiaomi, so we have this secure login. It's in actually in line with the service tree node inside Xiaomi. So if we have an authorization for the service tree node, then you can log in through these to the kind of like a container. So inside the container, as I mentioned, the docker enter. So this is what we used, and uh, the docker enter will use the IP to register yourself in the service tree and to use the secure login. So the, re the result that we have here is that you have the authorization for your personal account. It's kind of like uh, the physical, ma phys physical machine, so you can use the secure login. Then the dynamics of security. So when we talked about it in terms of the physical environment, we had like a lot of services. Actually, they had a higher demands in terms of security. We used a lot of simple and like IP, like a name list, the secure name list, and then we had these dynamic security solutions. So, for instance, let's assume that some clients they have these client end, and then they run the projects and the server and the docker. Well, the IP and part the information will be automatically registered, and then at the server end, we only need to have embed the SDK and the configuration can be. So the in on the whitelist and the, the SDK will be watched automatically, and uh, so if the IP chain changes, so the SDK will sense the changes and it will automatically upgrade the whitelist, and uh, these will help to achieve the dynamic server the dynamic service security that we required. So for the DB proxy, so we actually embed the SDK to have these kind of dynamic service security capability. So for the clients, we can have these. So in terms of the DB service, they don't need any, they, didn't, they don't need to do anything in on this site. And also we have an, an IP and job name working together to defend against the ZK failure. So we have, so if, like if the ZK encounters any failures, uh, we can use job name to connect it. And also for the monitoring, so the we have an open token. It's a no. It's a open resource monitoring. So we have these dynamic environments, and for all the data that we monitored, we use the Falcon agent to push us to Falcon server. So it's kind of like a push collection. So for the container, it has actually two advantages. The first thing is that it's more like uh, better integrated with the dynamic environment. So it's kind of like this automatic collection for the push data. And the second advantage is that we can actually use it to enable a more strategic self-discovery. It's kind of like a more automated discovery. And uh, so what exactly 
is this kind of like automatic discovery? So, for instance, for the disk that we only have, like、uh, for the remaining space that we have, so the tag here. So we have, like the tag here, to describe the matrix that we had that、uh, for the mount. So whether it's like home or the like data part of it, so we have this mechanism. So whether it's like inside the container node, whether it add a new container node, or have inside the node have a dynamic dynamically add a like a different part of it. So we actually have. Have this metric monitoring can be detected automatically. So inside the container, whether you experience any dynamic changes, we only need one policy to actually detect the remaining space we have in the disk. So through the monitoring system, through the services numbers, and also the pass, the core design can make it simpler or easier for the container. So we have this transformation towards Kubernetes. We all know that this is actually a very hard transformation, because from Mesa's transformation towards Kubernetes, we did not do too many things in there. That the main reason is because we have already done a lot of things. It's more relevant to GL. It's more kind of like independence. We do not highly rely on Mesa's. Therefore, the transformation towards Kubernetes, a lot of、um, a lot of solutions can be adapted when transformation, so it becomes easier when transforming. This is a double engine because the cluster of the clusters of Maces for Xiaomi, we actually have、um, eight clusters. And some of them are Kubernetes, some of them are Mesos. So we need to have this capability that we, for each different clusters, we need to use different engines. And we all know that this reconstruction can bring us a new adapter. So the role of adapter in this solution is basically. For the transformation and migration of our code, including API and including processing events, these two main things for adapters. That is because of the Kubernetes and Mesos, they have significant difference. For instance, for API, you cannot just linearly connect in one to another. Therefore, we need to solve these issues between the APIs. And that is through the help by the adapter. Also, we have made this cutting because in some of our scenarios, we do not need to use、um, Kubernetes ingress or service. So we have just breakthrough. The barriers between container and the physical network, and this is based on our infra. We used to use zk, and now we're still using that. So now we do not use the Kubernetes service and ingress. So we've cut these two parts from the Kubernetes, and we have closed the、uh, contracts and the kernel. But before this cutting, there are sixteen percent of differences in the Kubernetes、uh, network cluster. But after we've done this, there's no difference. There are、um, also mechanisms that we try to make the best use of them. For instance, we talk about we need to have an LVMG in a Docker. And we have the disk management of the. We use CRD to do that. And as for our release policy, we have this new development to provide us a more accurate control. 
So we have these two different types of development. We use that to manage our release and delivery. And then it's our health check. We know that the under DCOS, the container engine is very important, but it's it does not mean everything. So when building DCOS, we have actually done a lot of pass expanding. Or you can say that based on that, we have expanded a lot of SaaS capabilities. For instance, this component service, we have this installation package within the plugins, but it's just for the progress and files. But with under the DCOS content, we actually can treat these plugins as our installation package and install them into our clusters. So it's a group and groups of clusters, and we can insert many of our best tuned scenarios. It's our insert, our optimized configuration, or even make it automation. And also we can have an overall monitoring. So when we fire up this service, we can instantly monitor them real time. So we can increase our capability of monitoring these clusters. And also we have provided strong regulations towards these services, for instance, highly automation. For instance, automated backup and migration and the self-check or even self-repair based on different scenarios. So as you can see, we've already applied on the services we've seen on this chart. Also, these are also the capabilities we wish to have. That is, we want to copy the traffic. For instance, we want to use or transfer our traffic or the services from a service to another service. First of all, we like to do this in RP, and that's based on the TCP copy. And to magnify or to minimize the traffic, and to run the service mesh under our production environment, therefore, we can own all these service mirror. This tra the ability of traffic mirror is based on Yatsa. So based on this capability, we will provide a better solution for that. Within the um, past few years, Service Mesh is really popular. One of its main capability is its basic structure that we can trigger um, the insert package of it because based on our native cloud environment, they can provide another environment that you could balance our overload. For instance, if we have appeared some issues during the on the net or during the workload, it can very fastly respond automatically. For instance, scaling down, scaling up, or even the trigger off. Also, we have this traffic router. It can be very agile when applying this router. For instance, we can derive this header traffic to different parts of the system. We can apply that into different scenario. Also, we have this service um, pr protection mechanism. For instance, we need to have the highest level of traffic limitation for our service protection. We can insert some TOS or other certificates or other balance uh, mechanism or policy in it. This is all through our service network. This, this is called chaos uh, simulation. It's proposed by Netflix. The meaning behind that is um, we all know that many issues are 
peers from the developer's code is not healthy or it's not complete enough. So if the code is unreliable, then even if you do a lot of things during the DevOps and the, the infra, you can't actually make significant difference. But only through human communication, we cannot achieve that level of completion. So we have this mechanism to build up a system that through this system's mechanism, we can achieve this level of completion. Therefore, we offer this tool to do this online reliable test. And also we can discover our crisis for instance, we can close up some mechanisms during the environment and we can simulate some service malfunction or degrade or even circuit breaker. And we can also clean out the resource that's not been used and to clean out the service that we that we do not need. And of course, we can find our um, vulnerabilities and kick them out and to solve the issues. We can also lay down our policies. For instance, we can um, de-release, we can ban the release of the mechanism. So these policies can be apply the security and the reliability of online production. So we've mentioned a lot of things um, related to DCOS. There are a lot of structures that we need to build because there are still a lot of capabilities above SaaS layer. But I've talked about the core value of the um, natural of DCOS. It is we need to seek for a strong, a better control capability under DCOS. And under that capability, we will wish to have the automatic control abilities under that. Because if hum we need to do this manually, then we can have a um, we can have a missed decision, we have a bad decision. So we can have this DC brain scenario. For this scenario, um, we did not offer a lot in it, and I'm only going to talk about two scenarios. One is the root reason analysis. On our left hand side, that is in a domain, the domain's reliance is this a decision tree. So we can analysis that. It can be our internal LB issues. And under that, it's a real server. For instance, in this case, we'll name that as service A. And service A might depend on service B. The service A is run, running based on some host. And the host is depend on switches. So if we have alert from one domain, and at this time, we can make our decisions from this decision tree whether when we can check out what is the what is the endpoint of this alert. Now we can seek for the issue. But there are two points that you need to fulfill. First of all, we need to find out our issues through topology automatically. And every topology will need to have an auto detection. There's something very difficult to achieve. First of all, that each dimensions, when we bank in on the topology, they're not at the same point. They're not a flat surface. So we need to break through the barriers between them. And the last point I'm going to mention is the male function um, self-curing system. So after we have a good analysis for our root reason, then we can have a good male function self curation over here. But we, if we're trying to seek for a general solution, um, we need to seek for the automation when trying to cure ourselves. There is a core function in it. It's called the stack storm. 
It relies on a lot of sensor module to gather the information. And in the IFTC module, it will build a lot of routes, decision, strategies. And it will trigger its relative workflow. And within that workflow, it will define all the dimensions of actions. So it will transform its circumstances. And under that, it's audit. It will audit all the actions that has been triggered and knock them down. And the lower part are the systems we have already connected with these systems. The upper part is our um, lock system and monitoring system. And the lower part of it is our mainframe management, developed system, domain, and other systems. So in the future, we would like to strengthen our this trigger system for auto curing. So this will be the end of my speech. And this is our um, public account of Xiaomi. These are our technology we have developed. So thank you for your listening.